Body armor is an extremely valuable asset for any serious citizen to have in their arsenal, but there are so many options out there that it's very difficult to get into as a beginner. This is going to be my attempt of trying to simplify this process. The way that I look at body armor is like a triangle. You've got cost, weight, and protection. You have to give up one of these, you can't have all three. Body armor can be divided into two categories, soft and hard armor. Soft armor is going to be flexible and concealable, but only offer protection against handgun rounds, while hard armor are going to be your rifle plates that can stop rifle rounds. For this video, we're mainly going to be focusing on plates. You'll see three main materials used in plates. That will be steel, ceramic, and plastic. This is like ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, but plastic's a lot easier to say. Starting off with steel, steel armor is going to offer you the most protection for the money. They are going to be relatively thin, but I personally would never recommend you buy steel body armor simply because they are too heavy. There's a whole bunch of other issues like spalling and there's anti-spalling coating. Without even going into that, adding 15 to 30 pounds to your kit, in my opinion, is not worth the protection that you gain from it. I would personally recommend you avoid steel plates if possible. That leaves you with ceramic and plastic. Ceramic is going to be the most prevalent type of plate out there. Kind of good at everything, kind of like a jack of all trades. They offer good protection. They are relatively affordable. They are relatively lightweight. The big downside of ceramic plates is that they are fragile. It's not recommended you keep these in the trunk of your car rolling around in the heat. If these do start getting micro fractures and cracks, they lose their structural integrity and possibly their protection. These are designed to get shot at by bullets and not much more, so that's something to keep in mind, but this is likely what you'll end up with just because these are kind of the standardized option. Polymer plates, or like I said, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, plastic plates, poly plates, whatever you want to call them, are going to be the lightest possible option for you. Extremely light, actually, it's kind of scary. They are usually going to be a lot thicker, but that's a good sacrifice I'm willing to make considering how much lighter they are. Generally, more expensive. They also have the bonus of usually being buoyant, meaning that they will float if you fall into water. That's a very niche thing, but just something to keep in mind. As you start moving up in price point, you'll start seeing some hybrids, something like a ceramic backer with a poly front. These are very, very nice and usually offer you the best of both worlds, but like I said, you have to go up in price point to see a configuration like this. You'd be very hard pressed to find something like this for under $1,000. So for the purpose of this video, we'll mainly be sticking to the single material types. When it comes to protection, we judge them by the NIJ level standards. The NIJ standards are the level three plates, level four plates that you've probably heard of. It starts at level 2A and then level two, and then there's also level 3A. These are all soft body armor with varying protections for different pistol rounds between the three. I'm mostly going to be talking about hard armor for this video. Level three body armor is going to protect you against lead core full metal jacket rifle rounds you know, 556, 762 by 39. They are rated to protect you against up to five rounds of full metal jacket 308. Then you've got level four body armor, which is the highest class that the NIJ rates. Level four body armor is designed to stop a single round of armor piercing 30 out six and pretty much everything else as well. There's also a couple levels that are not officially recognized by NIJ, but you will see a lot when browsing through plates. The most prevalent of those being level three plus. Level 3 Plus offers light armor penetration protection. Regular Level 3 plates are designed to only stop lead core rounds, but with how prevalent Green Tip 556 is, this is a threat that you will likely encounter if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need body armor. So Level 3 Plus is basically Level 3 plates, but they can also stop M855 rounds or other steel core intermediary rounds. There is also Special Threat plates, which are kind of unique. Special threat plates drop protection on larger caliber rounds like 308, but focus on giving you protection against armor piercing intermediary rounds like 556 M855A1 or 762 by 39 MAI AP. Level four plates will give you a lot of peace of mind knowing that this is the highest possible armor level, but a lot of the time you'll end up overpaying or getting a subpar product compared to something like a level three plus or a special threat plate which will protect you against rounds that you're far more likely to encounter. One final thing to keep in mind when it comes to plates is that there are single curve and multi-curve plates. I don't have any multi-curve plates here to show you what they look like, but it's pretty simple. Single curve plates are going to be straight all the way down. Multi-curve plates are going to concave out and then in. Multi-curve is going to be 
far more comfortable to wear around all day, but it is going to be significantly more expensive because they are more difficult to manufacture. If you find a multi-curve plate that is in your price range, go for it. It's going to be more comfortable, but it is not required and you can save a lot of money just by going with a single curve. The plates that we'll be testing today are Guard Dog Body Armors Level 3 plastic plates. These are what we currently carry in the store. They are extremely light. They're under three pounds. These are ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or just plastic plates and they are rated for level three. We will see if it actually holds up to that. Testing body armor is an art form perfected by companies that have far vaster resources than I do. This is not really gonna be testing. I'm going to put this in a $20 Amazon plate carrier and shoot that guy. The quality you've come to expect from Shark Coast Tactical. We are going to start it off with something that has zero chance of going through, 22 long rifle out of this TX-22. Shot one, shot two, obviously didn't even make it through the first layer, obviously no back face formation. Going up to nine mil out of this Glock 17. There's a nine mil hole, obviously didn't go through, held up so far, nothing on the back. Tiniest amount of bulge on there, there's really nothing to it. Moving on to something slightly more powerful, uh, we're gonna shoot 357 Magnum out of this Smith & Wesson. Three fifty seven hole larger than the nine mil one still didn't go through. Again, very small bump back there, but nothing serious. And the jacket of the round is actually still in there. Now we're going to go up to five seven by twenty eight out of this FN five seven. This is a much smaller round, going much faster, so it should theoretically have a better chance of penetrating. Okay, an even smaller hole than the 22. Again, it's a very small round, but it did go deeper in than the nine and the 357 did. Still didn't make it anywhere close to going all the way through. Again, ever so slight amount of bump back here, but I would not really call that deformation. He's still holding up to all pistol rounds we've thrown at it, which is good because it's level three and should be able to take a 308. We're gonna move way up now to a 62 grain full metal jacket 5.56 round. The green tips are gonna come later because this plate is not rated for green tips. This is just a regular lead core. So the hole from the 5.56 round is very small, but the deformation shows you just how much force it is packing. I don't know if that shows good on camera, but there is a significant bulge here. This is definitely problematic. Big bruise for sure. Not quite dead yet though. I would say this would probably save your life. Bumping it up, we're gonna go to 762 by 39 full metal jacket out of this AK-104-ish Palmetto State. The 762 by 39 hole is very similar to the 556 from the front. On the back, you've got a lot of back face deformation now. I don't know if that's because we stacked the 556 and 762 next to each other, but this is starting to look like it would probably break a couple bones. Moving it up to the limits of this plate's protection, we've got a round of 308, 762 by 51 NATO out of this HK MR 762A1. Believe it or not, it did stop it, but that is a big fucking bulge. That is most definitely 
broken ribs, sternum, whatever. Look at that. Camera see that? The entrances all look about the same when it comes to the rifle rounds. You can't really tell how much I fucked it up until you see that, but you can kind of tell from how much force was transferred onto our mannequin that this would obviously not feel good, but it did not make it through the plate. I want to give it a fair shake, swap it out for a fresh plate to see if we get the same result. That plate we had already hit several times beforehand, so I got a fresh one just stuck onto that pallet right there. We're going to hit it again with the same 308 out of the same rifle and see if the back fate formation is the same. All right. Yep, so once again, stop the 308. A lot of back face deformation. It's not quite as bad as the first target was, but... There we go, get a good angle on that. You never want to get hit by 308. This at least stopped the round, but no matter what type of armor you're wearing, it's not gonna be a fun experience. So the sub $200 plastic plate did stop all the rounds that it's rated to stop. Now that comes with a lot of pain, but you don't have a bullet in you. Time to shoot it with something that it's not rated for. These are good old M855. 5.56 green tips that you can buy anywhere. Probably the most common fighting round out there. I hit that right above the 308 hole and it sailed clean through. I'm gonna try it again a little bit higher because maybe this had something to do with it. Set it back up. Again, this is not a round that this plate is rated to stop. We're just seeing how it does. Clean through, even higher, where it's not affected by the 308 shot. Level three plates will not stop green tips, even though they stop regular lead core 5.56 ammo. This is where something like a special threat plate or a level three plus plate would come in really handy because it would be able to stop that green tip round as well. It's safe to say that if it's not stopping the green tip, it's not stopping any, even if it's light armor penetrating, any sort of armor penetrating ammunition. The plate stopped every round it was rated for and didn't stop any of the rounds it wasn't rated for. This is a fix shooting 8.6 blackout out of a 12 inch barrel. This round is newer than the NIJ system, so I don't think it really falls into a specific spot. These aren't some fancy armor piercing rounds. These are just standard subsonic target loads of 8.6 blackout. Let's see what this does. Oh, it's still in there. <laughs> So the subsonic 8.6 didn't make it through, but it's sitting right there. You can see the back of the bullet there. Looks like it started turning upwards, probably because it's the one in three twist. It's spinning so fast. When it hit, it started going up and stopped very close to the center. So if you happen to be hunted by Kevin Birmingham, as long as he's not shooting those fancy tomahawk rounds, you should be fine. So I want to preface once again that I am in no way a professional armor tester, nor do I have the faculties to properly test body armor. I am just a shithead that works at a gun store that is shooting plates in his friend's backyard. Having said that, these level three guard dog plates stopped every round that an NIJ level three plate should be stopping. Even though we did get a lot of back face deformation with the 308 round, that is kind of to be expected. 308 packs a hell of a punch. This is my first time shooting plates, so I don't really know what to compare this to. I don't really have a frame of reference. If there are any of you out there that do, please leave it down in the comments and let me know if you think this is an acceptable amount. If you believe it is an acceptable amount, the guard dog plates are under $200. The one thing to touch on is the fact that the green tips sailed clean through, which was expected as level three plates are not rated to stop green tips. With how prevalent M855 rounds are in America, it might be worth looking into something like a level three plus plate or even a special threat plate, if that is what you're concerned about. But if it's mainly about 
weight savings and lead core full metal jacket ammo for you, I would argue these are a pretty good option. Me personally, I run the HESCO L210s in my plate carrier. These are special threat plates, so they would not have stopped the 308 round, but they would have stopped the M855 green tips and even M855A1s. However, just to really hammer in how much of weight savings we're talking about here, both of the guard dog plates together weigh about the same as a single one of the HESCO L210s. When it comes to selecting body armor for yourself, there's going to be a lot of personal preference involved. There's a lot of other things that I haven't really gotten into, like different cuts and different sizes, which I can touch on real quickly. I recommend shooter or swimmer cuts. Those are going to be missing the little arm sections here to make it more maneuverable and easy to shoulder rifles with. When it comes to the size, 10 by 12 is the standard. 8 by 10 are the small sizes. Easiest way to figure out which one you need is measure the distance between your two nipples. If that is closer to 8 inches, go for the 8 by 10s. If it's closer to 10 inches, go for the 10 by 12s. If weight savings are your main concern, you're probably going to have a good time with ultra high molecular weight polyethylene plates like these guard dogs here. If cost savings is your main concern, cheaper ceramic plates might fit you a little bit better, like this gun show special I've got here. And if you are looking for protection, you probably want to be going up in price drastically to a name brand like HESCO. If you would like to buy a pair of plates for yourself and shoot them in your friend's backyard to figure out if they will stop certain rounds, stop by Shark Coast and pick some of these up. They're not that expensive. Thank you.